What's up, YouTubers? Uh, Sam Fabian here, Cool Meadows Motorsports, and I'm sitting down in front of this 1957 Chevy Bel Air to introduce you guys to our new online series that we're gonna call In the Barn. We're gonna spend the next few months indoors. We're not really doing any four wheeling. We're not gonna be doing any trips. We're not going to KOH this year, unfortunately. So my goals are going to be to get caught up on some projects get some stuff fixed that I've been neglecting for quite some time and I uh, figured no better way than to share with you all because some of it's pretty cool like got the 57 Chevy behind me I got another 57 Chevy truck we're gonna be working on uh, I got some off-road rigs we got to work on including the plum our toter home my f-350 don't worry we got a whole sta stable full of vehicles yeah you're forgetting a car I think you forgot something and a uh, 2008 Tiburon we're going to be working on apparently too. So, um, a lot of unique repairs, not exactly by the book. Going to weld some stuff in on some of the older vehicles. Uh, basically just kind of a do what's necessary to make them run, make them move, possibly make them drive, even maybe take them to a cruise night or two. And uh, yeah, so figured I'd share it with you all. Hopefully you enjoy it. Be sure, make sure you like, subscribe to the page, and don't forget to comment. Give us some good feedback on what we can improve on and make these episodes the best that they can be. So stay tuned. This is episode one. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Project numero uno. 1957 Chevy Bel Air two door two door Bel Air uh, my dad picked this up when I was really young and pretty much it's been sitting ever since so our goal today just to give you guys a little background on it it does run currently uh, a couple weeks ago I got it fired up again a couple years ago I put a new set of points in it, new distributor cap, new rotor, and uh, believe it or not, I was able to get it to fire up doing the good old gear oil bottle hanging from the hood going into the carburetor feed for the fuel. So it ran on its own. Surprisingly, the carburetor actually didn't leak and feels like it's not clogged up. Don't know for sure, but this time around, a couple weeks ago, because we had to get the car out and moved around for a party we held. Um, I decided to plumb a fuel line, as you can see here, from a good old VP racing can hanging out in this wonderful cavity up in the front of the car, down to the fuel pump, up to the carburetor, and ran the car like that so I could close the hood down a little bit and actually see where I was going, and proceeded to find that when trying to move it on its own, the transmission mounts are completely collapsed, which was binding the shift linkage, and it would only go in the drive. So I used a chain and binder and basically held the transmission up for the time being so I could move it around. And that's pretty much where we sit. Tonight, what I wanna do, I have some new transmission mounts for a power glide transmission. But um, we're gonna put the mounts in. I think the linkage is slightly bent, so I'm gonna see if I can fix that. And then once that's all said and done, I wanna drop the fuel tank and see what the condition of the fuel tank's in because it won't pull fuel from the tank whatsoever. I think it's clogged full of junk, who knows. But that's the goal, that's what we were looking for. Sarah's ready. Yeah. Let's do this. So, let's get her jacked up and uh, get down underneath.
right, so I got the car jacked up. You can see my chain binder rigging I got going on holding the transmission up, but these are the transmission mounts down here on the sides. They're just, obviously this thing leaks. They're completely, this one on the driver's side is completely annihilated. But, uh, so I'm gonna get the jack under the trans, get the weight up off the chain, get rid of my jury rigging here so that's gone. Get the weight up off the transmission mounts. And we're gonna zip them out, zip the new ones in, take a look at our linkage over here and see if it's bent up at all. So, grab a few tools, and we'll uh, crank this out. That's a blow tube, so that, that's where the crankcase pressure was released down to because they didn't have anything like PCV valves or stuff back in the day. Two pieces. Oh, I see one coming down already. Right? Oh my god, that's metal. This is metal, and then the rubber connection is just fried. Jeez, that's crazy. We should be having gloves. I know. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> We normally wear gloves, we got excited. <laughs> Alright. Here's your old, which is supposed to be one piece like this. It's now two. Going to replace with the new. Oh. 
find that nut or no? No. Ready for the top one? Yep. on the bottom. Yeah. Interesting. Alright. Oh Jesus, this one came out in two pieces too. Don't worry about it, we'll get the uh... Jack out of the way maybe? Yeah, we'll put the bolts through. Set the trans down and get the jack out of the way so that I way. I found can... one at least. Here's the nut. Transmission mount on the driver's side and on the passenger side. Right, next up, we'll go to the back and see if we can drop this fuel tank. And there's the fuel tank. Wonderful. More pack job patches on this deal. Find rust every time I'm under it. But well, what can you do? So we got. Looks like we should be able to undo the two back half of the straps there. Drop the tank out. We see that light over here. The fun part I think is going to be getting this fuel filler neck hose undone. Cause that looks nasty. And I have no idea what is in the tank, how much fuel is in the tank. I'm sure Murphy's Law says it's probably at least half full, which means it's going to weigh a ton. But, let's get those broken loose, see if they break or not, and go from there. I just realized, oh, uh, hold on. Oh, this is it. So much dump packed up on there, it's hard to tell.
fingers. So those are undone. I gotta figure out. Can you grab the light from up top? Which light? It's above in the trunk. Oh. Now we get to figure out what's going on with this. Give me uh, that screwdriver and um, Years and years and years of crap. So, uh, how much did your dad get this for? Nine hundred dollars. How long ago? Quite a few years ago. Back in the nineties. I don't know. Does that disconnect from where? Is that? So that's a, oh, this is all hard metal right here. Interesting. Oh, here's a, the fill here's a rubber, rubberized piece right here. So the, that's all the way up there. So I guess we'll have, can, that's dry logic too. Is there any way to disconnect this from the tank portion? Cause that's gonna suck to have to feed that all the way through there. This hose is getting cut because this thing is all messed up. The vent hose. This we're going to have to undo because that's a clamp holding that on. Hmm. Give us a minute. We'll figure this out. I think. See if I get a little room so I can see. There's like some sort of ball connection on the filler neck going into the tank. It looks like it might just pull apart. Can you support that side of the gas tank so it doesn't go flying off if I pop this? Six and a half hours later. So I guess there should have been a gasket there. It's probably dried out to no end. All right, I'm gonna lower this down slow. Okay. And there should be, I'm gonna assume there's probably just a single wire for the fuel gauge. Really hold on to it by the corner. Uh, it's up in the front. Don't move. That is utterly amazing. They definitely, it's gotta be the metals. It's gotta be the metals they use because anything in the 80s and 70s and I would not have this luck, especially newer than 90s, forget about it. As soon as I get unstuck here. Come on, creeper. Ready? Yeah. Coming down. Okay. Wow. And just let it, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Wow. Mm. 
Wow. Pretty cool. Ah, oh, yeah, this thing's toast. All right. Fuel tank, fuel straps, probably order a filler neck. That's full <laughs> of full of junk. Oh. Transmission mounts are in. Some success tonight. Uh, we're gonna have to order a fuel tank. We're gonna have to order tank straps. Probably gonna have to order. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to replace the filler, no doubt. That has stuff in it, all the rust. So. All right, there you have it. Episode number one. Starting with the Bel Air. Um, Please, please, please let me know what you think. I know it's gonna be a little rough around the edges at, the, at first. Both Sarah and I have to get used to doing this. I'm gonna to have to get used to figuring out the camera angles and how to film stuff right. Uh, right now I'm doing everything with a Go, one single GoPro and I do have something on order that's coming in that should make life a heck of a lot easier for this. So, quality should get better. Uh, as you can see, I got a microphone strapped up to my neck now, thanks to one of my family members for this purchase. Hopefully the audio gets better. You'll be able to see a little more and there won't be as much unnecessary talk or filler. That's it, episode one of In the Barn. I will see you guys on episode two.